Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Digital Savages Challenging the Status Quo podcast with your host, Amir Sabirovic. On the last episode of Challenging the Status Quo, we had Ivan Skoric, the global digital client lead at Walk the Wheel and founder at Shop, a social media platform for local businesses. Here's a short part of our interview. Try and love yourself, first and foremost. Always be grateful for absolutely everything. Be positive where you can. Always share love. And never, ever, ever, ever bet against yourself and doubt yourself. Never bet against yourself. Well, never betting against yourself should arouse your interest to listen to the full episode. So go one episode back, listen to Ivan, and then join us for our new guest. And let's hear his story. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Challenging the Status Quo podcast. Today, I have a special guest from Croatia. He's an investor and entrepreneur and co-founder and managing partner at WebPower Adria. His name is Jan de Jong, and he's a Dutchman living in Croatia. Welcome, Jan. Thank you very much, Amir. Thank you for having me. Hey, Jan. Uh, it's, of course, very... Uh, um, curious or how you can i would say surprising to see a dutch man moving from the netherlands to croatia you don't see that oftenly so as as all guests could you give us your background and how you got where you are right now definitely uh, i mean first of all amir you're absolutely right uh, over the past decade 15 years uh, approximately 500,000 people have left croatia Uh, looking for happiness and opportunities in other countries such as Ireland, the Netherlands, Germany, basically all over the world they went. Uh, so it, it comes to a lot of people as a surprise that, you know, being being a Dutch guy, basically growing up in a country that that offers it all uh, for me than, than to make a decision to move to Croatia. Uh, I have to say I don't regret it at all. Uh, living a very nice and, 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 and good life in Croatia. For me... Uh, a uh, beautiful country first of all it's not for no reason that that so many people every year are getting in the car or in an airplane to to visit croatia for their holidays uh, i just decided that uh, it's it's such a beautiful country i might as well start living there um let me just uh, take you a little bit down the memory lane then on 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 how i actually ended up here uh, i was born and raised in a small town next to gouda Uh, where the cheese is from uh, in the Netherlands. And I was working at that time, I was working for a company called M Plus Group. M Plus Group is, uh, was based in Alphen in the Netherlands and they were specialized in, um, in, in, in marketing and telemarketing contact center business. Uh, and I started working there when I was 17 as, as like a student job because I was at the university uh, studying marketing. And um, by the time that I was like 21 years old, I was pretty much running running all the operations of the of the contact center in the Netherlands, and then I had to do my final thesis for university. So I went to the owner of M Plus Group, which is Mato Bozic, uh, Croatian guy, and I asked him, you know, since I was able to pretty much leave university for a period of one year to write my thesis, uh, if he would be interested, if I would go to Croatia with the goal to investigate whether there is a chance to expand M plus group to this region. So they liked the idea and they gave me a green light. So I got in my car on the 3rd of September, 2006, uh, 2006 yeah. And um, that's when I started, I came down to split. Uh, I didn't know anything about the country. I didn't know anybody in the country. Uh, and, and, and slowly but surely using Google a lot, I, I started investigating whether there was any chance for a contact center uh, business in, in, in this region. And then a little bit fast forward, after one year, uh, by the time that I graduated, we had uh, the first couple of clients uh, in Croatia. We employed some 35 people. Uh, and then I had a lunch with Mato where we agreed that if I would go after graduation back to Croatia to continue what I started, that I would be a co-owner in the business 50-50, uh, Uh, and, and, and that's when the real fun started, basically. Uh, that's when we started growing the company year by year. Uh, of course, there were a lot of bumps in the road, and we had to work very, very hard for many years. Uh, 80 hours a week were, were no exception. Uh, 
but then um, in 2015, December 2015, uh, at that time, I already employed more than 400 people in the contact center, and I got an offer to sell my shares, which I did. Uh, at that moment, uh, I was 31 years old. Uh, had a lot of time all of a sudden because I was always engaged with with running the call center as a CEO and president of the board. Uh, and all of a sudden, I enjoyed a lot of freedom to decide what I was going to do next. And that's when I started the company that I'm active in today, which is called WebPower Adria. Uh, WebPower Adria is a company specialized in uh, email marketing and marketing automation. And just like what I did back then in, in 2006 when I opened the call center in, uh, in Croatia, we we had like a first mover advantage. There were no real professional call centers in, uh, in in this region. So we were one of the first ones to get started with that. And also with the email marketing, most of the companies in our region, if they want to send out any newsletters, they, they very often they use solutions like MailChimp. Anyway, there's there's no locally present strong players in this field uh, in pretty much the entire region. So I decided that I wanted to be a first mover in that as well. and. I have to say we're very satisfied with with how the business is developing. That's nice. Um, and and what was the final thought to? So was it easy for you to move from the Netherlands and Croatia? And what did you miss or what did you enjoy? Um, I have to say that I think I was very fortunate that I was moving to Croatia at such a young age. I think if you're 22 years old, I have never really had a career in the Netherlands uh, that that already kind of like shaped me in a way that it was difficult to to adjust to new habits or new culture. I was very, very young, perhaps a bit naive, very passionate and and, 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 uh, very driven to to turn whatever I was going to do into a success. Uh, But it was definitely difficult to get used to to some of the cultural differences. Uh, I would say maybe the first one or two years. That was sometimes I just needed to explain to myself that I was not working in the Netherlands and that I just had to accept things the way they are. Yeah. So there was no Ryan uh, Ryland model there. No, Polar. what? Aha. Uh-huh. Um, no, 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 <laughs> no. There's, um, I mean, in, in companies here, but of course that was not something that I was easily able to see in the beginning. Uh, but there is in general, um, quite strong hierarchies in, in, in the business here. The, the owner is, a, is, is often a very strong figure in the business. Okay. And and what took you the longest to adjust to? Um, hmm. Well, the, the first thing that, that was like really a big surprise to me. So I moved down to Split, which is the second largest city in, uh, in Croatia. Uh, in Split, there's approximately 200, 250,000 people, including the surrounding area. And I mean, for me, that was like, okay, you know, if you want to move to the Netherlands and you move to the second largest city, Rotterdam, for instance, uh, there's plenty of business opportunities in Rotterdam. You know, there's no less opportunity in Rotterdam than there is in Amsterdam. But I didn't know that Croatia was so centralized and that everything is centralized in the capital city of Zagreb. Uh, all the headquarters of all the businesses uh, are based in Zagreb. And there is actually very little th- going on in, in the city of Split, besides the fact that it's a beautiful city with a very beautiful old town. Uh, for business, it's perhaps not the best place to be, um, but that's something that I had to find out later. And and now what it comes down to is that, especially before Corona, because now my life has also changed a little bit, uh, but that I ended up having to travel to Zagreb every week, which is a drive of 400 kilometers. So usually, you know, I used to spend three days a week in Zagreb, uh, and then the rest of my days I would spend at home in uh, in Split. Well, that's and uh, and and then uh, I don't know if the highway was already set when you were there in 2006, but I it can was. imagine uh, it was. Yeah, it, it was. Luckily, <laughs> yeah. No, it, it was a very good drive. It's a nice drive. Hey, and, and can you define how success looks like to you from that perspective, living at the sea coast? I mean, I don't consider living at the sea coast uh, uh, a success. I, I think that. Um, you want my definition of success? Yes, it's always personal. Yeah, uh, I think that um, for me personally, success means that I'm able to choose uh, what I want to get myself involved with. 
what do I want to do in life and having the, the freedom uh, to, to decide in which direction I'm going to take my life and to shape my life the way I want it. That's what I call success. Yeah. To be to be free and not bided by external factors. I mean, we are all uh, facing external factors, of course, but then I think that if, if, if you, it, 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 it always, it's very much about how you respond to your external environment. And uh, I, I think I'm doing that quite well, uh, but also because I'm involved with things that I'm really passionate about. That's a, a good personal definition. I don't think it falls uh, very far from my, my own. Uh, yeah. It is different for everybody, of course, but uh, this yeah. is how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah and, and you know, uh, if I would give you the possibility to go back to that kid that uh, went uh, on uh, twenty-two years of, of age um, to to Croatia, what would you advise him? One advice that you would oh, give him? Oof, very good one. Um, try to enjoy the ride as much as you can. Uh, because what I've been doing myself is I was always very much focused on where I want to go with the business. And sometimes I forgot to enjoy the ride while going to that destination, so to say. And uh, now looking back, of course, I had a really very fun ride. But perhaps I did not experience it always at that moment in that way. So I would definitely say try to enjoy the ride and celebrate along the way every time as much as possible. That's a good one. That's a good one. And what do you do on a daily basis to challenge the status quo? I mean, <clears throat> in, in Croatia, there is in general a, a rather negative sentiment. So people are obviously for certain good reasons. Uh, they're leaving Croatia massively, uh, going to other more developed countries, looking for opportunities and happiness over there, where, especially through my LinkedIn account, um, I really want to make an effort to open up eyes of people here in Croatia or in the rest of the region that there are actually a lot of opportunities here. Uh, you just have to be open for them and, and you need to see them. And I think that the moment that you start looking at what is happening in Western Europe and what is not happening where we live, uh, and if you look at the things that frustrate us or what we complain about, I think that that's where you can find at the same time opportunities for, for entrepreneurs. And uh, just like I have been able to two times start a company where I, where I actually enjoy first mover advantage, I think that there's a lot of areas where there can be first mover advantage uh, in this region. And so, yeah, challenging the status quo, this is definitely one, one way to do it. Uh, you know, opening up eyes of people living here that you don't have to move abroad to a country where it rains all the time to find your happiness over there. That's our economical business model, right? If we would have good weather, we would have desperate economy as well. I would For, say. Yeah, maybe <laughs> it goes hand in hand. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, and what, what is your wish, your goal? Like, do you have a grand goal, what you want to achieve with this, what you're just doing, opening eyes, um, enabling people to see the light, let's say. You're kind of messiah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> want to call it that way. But, um, I mean, as, as I said, I, I, was, um, I was able to sell my first business at the age of 31. And then, um, you know, also through conversations with my wife, I was wondering, you know, what is the next thing that I'm going to do? You know, is, is selling a company with 400 employees at the age of 31, is that the biggest thing that, I've ever, that I'm ever going to do in my lifetime, in my career? And, uh, you know, I spoke about that with my wife intensively. And, and, you know, she also asked me a very good question, like, okay, but uh, uh, what do you, what, how, how would you define is this the biggest thing that you're ever going to do? I mean, finding water in Africa, as a matter of saying, is perhaps even is, is a bigger thing than starting a company and building it to 400 people. So what do you want to do? And, and being able to choose my battles and, 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 and what I like to do, uh, yeah, I, I, my biggest wish right now is to get involved in projects and companies and to get them started that can actually help this region where I live to move forward. 
because I mean, I'm a father of four children and my wife is Croatian. So that means that my kids are pola pola, half, half, uh, Croatian, half Dutch. And I will always, whether I like it or not, even though I mean, I enjoy it very much, but whether I like it or not, I will always have a connection with this country. And um, that means that if there is going to be a connection with this country, and if I plan my future, and perhaps even also the future of my children, even though they can, of course, decide that for themselves, uh, if that future for them is going to be in Croatia, then I would definitely want to contribute to a better Croatia than what we are having today. Okay. That's a beautiful and ambitious goal, of course. And I think that yeah. goes for the all the neighboring countries as well. Definitely. Um, the neighboring they, countries are facing a lot of similar challenges. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the Yugoslavian pocket. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same culture, same issues, same op- yeah. opportunities and challenges. Definitely. In, in, um, uh, of course, uh, selling this company at the age of 31, that is your your grand success, I would say, in your career. Uh, do you also have a biggest failure or biggest learning moment, as I would call it? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I've had businesses as well that uh, that went bankrupt. So uh, that was always during the period of between 22 and 31. I also had uh, involvement in several companies that at the end, just they, they didn't make it. For different reasons, uh, I would never call them failures, even though sometimes it really costs a lot of money. But um, yeah, these are definitely uh, things that, that that you can learn from. And 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 what I especially learned is that you need to be very careful sometimes at uh, choosing your business partners. Okay, and how did you turn this into your strengths? So uh, you you were more cautious uh, when, <laughs> when selecting people, or do they go to a, a special uh, special trajectory or pre- special process before they can do business with you? Or no, I mean at the end of the day, it's really a gut feeling when you're when you're choosing your business partners. You need to really feel comfortable with with the person that you're going to be in business with. Uh, you're going to be spending so much time together, sometimes even more time than with your own family. And uh, then in that case, you just have to make sure that um, that you do that with people that you care about. and But also people that from which you know that they care about you equally. Uh, I think yeah. that's very important because, Align. you know, if, yeah, because if you are in business together, you know, if I do something good for the business, I'm doing it not only for myself, but I'm doing it for my business partner too and, and, and vice versa. So, um, yeah, that's that's, I think, very important. And, and, and did did you have any sources that helped you during this journey or current journey, but also previously? So was it always you on your own or did you have mentors? Did you have help? How? how definitely how you... mentors. Yeah, yeah, definitely mentors. Uh, I'm, I'm, um, I'm always surrounding myself with a lot of other entrepreneurs. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a one-way direction where... You know, I have a mentor and he's just giving to me very often, actually, just by being among other men, uh, other entrepreneurs and exchanging challenges, uh, sometimes even really big problems uh, and to, to listen to each other and to support each other in that way. Uh, that's definitely uh, very helpful. And I think even necessary if you want to okay. move forward. Would you advise that you get the mentor as soon as possible, never matter what the age or state in life you are? Definitely. Uh, but I'm not saying that, uh, I mean, I, I think that over time you're going to have to find different kind of mentors because I think sometimes you're even outgrowing your mentor, so to say, or uh, your business outgrows your mentor. And I think it's important that if you are a business owner and your business is developing into the right direction, it's for me very normal that over a course of 10 years, you're going to have to surround yourself with different people from which you can still learn always try to aim high you know try to be surrounded with people that uh that you actually look up to yeah so your your environment actually choosing your environments uh in at each stage that you're in yeah and to and and, and to keep adjusting to that to keep adjusting to that and um what inspires you uh a very cliche but my kids of course i mean they're a big inspiration for for uh for me doing the things that i do today uh 
I think if I would live a life without children, that I would have probably different kinds of inspirations and I would maybe be involved in things differently. But for me, um, yeah, family. family. And of course, family is, very, is, 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 is the most important thing in that sense. I mean, this is the foundation that we build our house upon. Yeah, and then you you was just going to say something else on top of that. Well, uh, no, maybe losing my thoughts. <laughs> I don't know. But th- what did I say? Uh, uh, and you, oh, you yeah, okay, added... yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Um, I mean, what inspires me is is that I just really love to be surrounded with very interesting and creative people, and 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 me being an entrepreneur allows me to very often engage with very interesting people. I enjoy I enjoy it very much. Yeah. You're, they're people that go against the masses and the society, right? They do, yeah. they, they do not settle for status quo. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, every entrepreneur in that sense is my colleague. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't matter what kind of business they are in. But to me, if you are an entrepreneur, uh, in a way, to me, you're already a hero. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a nice way to put it. I mean, uh, most most ep- entrepreneurs go. I mean, uh, it, when you look at the biggest inventions in the world, they are created from frustration, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yes. So you take on the world. So that that goes for that hero. The, the, the biggest uh, businesses are built on a solid foundation of frustration. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's a nice quote. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you curious about right now uh i'm always curious about tomorrow you know about everything that is uh gonna happen i mean also if you look at the past three months so many things have changed already um not only in my company you know first of all uh i was one of the first companies also in croatia to say that um, my people they can literally choose whether they want to work from home or from the office uh, but how is this all going to change globally? You know, first of all, this first real big global pandemic. Um, also, uh, everything that is going on right now in the States, which is, of course, very ugly, everything that is happening over there. Uh, how is the whole world moving forward from here? That's what I'm very curious about. And how did, did COVID impact your business in any means? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, our biggest clients, they, they were forced to, uh, to close their doors. And uh, I would say that in Croatia, they were uh, taking very hard measures. So the only shops that were still working were either supermarkets or pharmacies. Uh, we were not allowed to travel anymore between the cities or between the villages. So you can only stay in your own village. Uh, you were really ordered to stay at home. And the only time when you could leave your home was basically if you needed to go buy groceries, which we did like once a week. Uh, and, and you know, my biggest clients, big retailers, uh, big shopping malls, uh, real estate development companies, uh, they, they all had to stop their activities. And yeah, of course, that impacts my business. Yeah, that's, that's harsh. And yeah. do you see any recovery right now? Well, actually... Uh, you mean as as a market overall, or for yeah, my company? Yeah, is is it? I mean, uh, for your company, but also for the market. I mean, uh, luckily, uh, thankfully, I have to say, uh, everything is now being reopened. So the restaurants are working again, shopping malls are open again. Uh, people are no longer actually wearing the masks anymore. Uh, I would say that life is slowly but surely getting back to where it used to be. Uh, of course, in Croatia, a country that depends with like 20% of its GDP on tourism, uh, the, the aftershock, I think, is still going to come because, you know, uh, tourists, they still need to start coming to Croatia right now. But they, we've had a very difficult month, April, May and June. Uh, it's going to be still also very difficult for, for the Croatian tourism sector. Uh, but for my company, I have to say that we, we responded very well to, uh, to everything that happened. We, first of all, uh, decided that if it's very difficult for me to sell my services, then I rather invest in building value in my business. 
So uh, I immediately said, okay, I'm, we're, we're just going to focus on giving, 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 giving to all of our clients, to all of our potential clients. And that's when we uh, initiated uh, a buy local campaign uh, where we asked all the companies in Croatia and actually also in this region, but mostly in Croatia, if they were using softwares like of, of big global players for sending out their newsletters, if they would want to switch that to web power, and then we would give them a very great special deal where they actually are able to save money for a couple of months. Uh, and the response to this was phenomenal. And I can say that uh, after that went out on my LinkedIn, uh, after that the media picked up on it, we have literally been covered by every single newspaper out here. Uh, all the big portals, they covered it. And uh, during those three months of lockdown, we have been able to increase our customer base with 40%. Uh, compared to what we had before we started with the lockdown. So with that result, we are we are super satisfied, of course. That doesn't mean that we immediately have 40% more revenue, but uh, at least we have built our Plus client. Yeah, I mean, uh, in a couple of months when all those companies are going to start paying for their services, that's when we're actually going to see the return of the investment that we made. And uh, it's going to be very good. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. I'm I'm glad to hear that actually you, you were impacted, but you handled it in a positive fashion, not panicking, oh, yeah. but using it to advantage and actually to add value to your customers. Yes, yes, that's what we did. And we also expanded our service portfolio, uh, offering an additional service, which we were also giving away free of charge. We were offering one hour free consultancy uh, video calls to everybody, to anybody that wanted to enjoy that. So we were really focusing on, on giving as much as possible to help companies in these most difficult times. Uh, and we believed that that was the right strategy to build value in our business, not for today, but for the long run. That's, that's really nice. Hey, a total different question, but if I would give you the possibility to dine with three people, alive or dead, who would those three people be? Uh, Elon Musk. Yeah, definitely. I would like to pick his brain. Uh, Brett Garlinghouse. I don't know if you know him. No. No? The CEO of a company called Ripple. Okay. That, okay. You can... Yeah, you can... No, no, I know. Now, now yeah. I know. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. It... Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, Richard Branson? Virgin, I, I think you can schedule the dates with him, right? Can you? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying. I mean, they're, they're alive. You just have to. Yeah, they're reach all out. alive. They're all alive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's meet with people from from today. Yeah, that are still yeah. alive. Hey, we're we're coming to the end of the podcast. Um, is there something that I should have asked but I didn't? Oof. Well, I mean, this is uh, we we went into this podcast completely. I mean, at least me, completely unprepared. You know, I was just yeah, gonna. That was the, that was the yeah. objective. <laughs> yeah. So um, I obviously didn't have a chance to think about what you were supposed to ask me and that you didn't ask me. But um, uh, no, I, I mean, I, I I I I think we covered it quite well. I mean, I don't know. Do you have any other questions left? No, I have I have one final uh, one, and uh -huh. uh, that is actually to ask you for a key takeaway that you would like to share with our audience. So, keeping in mind they're uh, students or young professionals or professionals yeah. from your entrepreneurial side, what would be your key takeaway for them and their career or entrepreneurial life? Uh, I would first of all say that to me, being an entrepreneur is the most amazing lifestyle that you can have. Uh, it keeps your life very interesting. You're meeting with so many beautiful people with amazing companies. Uh, and for you and able to, uh, to, 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 to design your life the way you want to live it in that way from a professional point of view, uh, I wish that for everybody. Uh, then if you want to go into that direction of becoming an entrepreneur, I always say, if you can start as early as possible, because you know being an entrepreneur doesn't mean that you can work whenever you want, wherever you want. To me, being an entrepreneur is that you're pretty much working all the time from everywhere. And for that, you need a lot of energy. And it's 
I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm very old, but I'm because I'm 35. But I can definitely say that I had more energy when I was 25 than when I was 35. So I always say, if you can start as early as possible, I would definitely recommend you to do that. Uh, again, another one that is very cliche, of course, but really choose something that you are most passionate about, passionate about because you're going to have to work really very hard if you want to build beautiful companies. And I don't think that you can work very hard and I don't think that you are able to, to make that kind of a sacrifice if you do that for something that you're not fully passionate about. Uh, go, good luck with, with working 80, 90 hours a week for something that you don't enjoy doing. But if you do have that passion for it and you work 80 hours a week, you're going to still be tired, but you're going to be satisfied. And uh, yeah, keep, keep uh, questioning the status quo. That's a very nice uh, uh, key takeaway full of quotes. So I'll really have to choose a, a solid one for announcing this podcast. Mm -hmm. Jan, it was a pleasure talking to you. Likewise. Um, uh, health and safety to you and your family. And uh, I hope your business uh, continues growing and going well as for you having success in the region and other people learning from your success story. Thank you so much, Amir. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. Likewise. Thank you. Speak See to you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Thank you very much for listening, dear ladies and gentlemen. This was Jan de Jong, the co-founder and managing partner of WebPower Adria. Join me next week for the interview with Dennis Sanchez, a story full of hardship and how he flipped his whole life 180 degrees to become a serial entrepreneur. Here is a short part of our interview. So uh, then we actually started a company in that. And then in my case, I knew a lot about advertising since my wife is an online marketer and I have always been a social media strategist so I know a lot about about concepting and doing uh, uh, making content and she knew a lot about uh, knows a lot about um, online marketing so I learned that from her um, and then you know I started this company with a friend of mine who he knew a lot about you know uh, are you curious about the rest of the story tune in next week and hear everything Dennis has to say about a life challenges entrepreneurship and a lot of tips how you can start today Thank you very much for listening. This was Challenging the Status Quo podcast with your host, Amir Sabirovic. Stay safe and healthy and until next week. Ciao.